How do we install a transformer? Well, let's break into it. So I was fortunate enough to have Maddox send me a transformer. Now this is kind of a cool thing a lot of people don't normally see, but this is a step up transformer. So with transformers, for those of you who don't know, um, a lot of them are either step up or step down. Uh, some of them can be back fed so you can if you have a step up transformer that's you know steps up from primary to secondary, you can back feed them. Now you gotta be careful on the application of it and what the manufacturer's instructions and all that jazz in. We'll get into later uh, some videos about back feeding transformers. But with this transformer, we have a 15 kVA transformer, um, 15,000 volt amps, and we have 208 on our primary and 480 volts on our secondary, and it's three phase. Um, so I put in two panels, I have a three phase, 125 amp uh, Schneider QO panel that's gonna be feeding the transformer. And then from the transformer back, I've got another three phase MLO panel instead of an MBR. Uh, the, this panel does not have um, a main breaker in it. It just has main lugs. So it's considered an MLO panel. So we're gonna be feeding from one three phase panel through the transformer to the other three phase panel. Now with in code in article 450, it says that we have to have a disconnecting means for the transformer. So there has to be some sort of disconnect or way to turn this off because we are within line of sight. We're actually like, you know, you could touch both of them. Um, I'm just using the breaker for my disconnecting means. That's absolutely okay. So first thing that I need to do is just place this and figure out like location wise, I need to leave enough space. So I did, I, I pulled this into a place where I've got enough space around it to work on it per code. Um, it's not in front of any of my panels. The next thing that I did was put transformer pads underneath the transformer. Now, most of the time, transformers are not gonna come with transformer pads. Um, there's no requirement that you have to put them in. I just find that over the years of installing these, it's just one level of care that I can take to try to minimize vibration because when you um, put these down on the ground, these things vibrate constantly. So the more vibration that you have with that metal on the concrete on the ground, it's just another point of vibration. You're already gonna have a loud humming. Um, from a transformer as it is. And then the more things inside of it that are either too tight or too loose, they're gonna create more vibration. So transformer pads are just these little rubber pads that I put underneath the transformer um, right away when I install them. Now that I've got the transformer in place, I had to get the knockouts out. So I actually sat and tried to bang these knockouts out. I've never had a transformer that has had I've never had a piece of equipment really where I couldn't just get the knockouts out. So I ended up having to put a little pilot hole and actually use my battery powered Milwaukee knockout set. And I just, you know, they're one inch knockouts. So I just put a one inch KO on it and knocked the same thing out. You do gotta be careful doing this though, because you don't wanna get like half of a knockout too much and half, you know, too little, and then they accidentally fall out. So you gotta be pretty careful when you do this. Shouldn't have to do this. They should just knock out perfectly. But these ones were really, really in there. Now that I got my knockouts taken out, um, I'm looking at my panels and I'm trying to figure out like how am I gonna route my metal flex to this. Um, my panel on the right, I want to keep on the bottom. So I want it to 90 underneath and go into the bottom knockout. And then my inside panel, panel on the left, I'm gonna have that flex uh, come on the top and 90 into them. So I want both of them to be really level and pretty uh, when I run these in. So I just pre-measured out all of the, the flex I'm using aluminum flexible metal conduit, FMC. Um, and so I pre-measure everything out. I, it's okay if I'm like an inch off or something like that. I just try to make sure if anything, I wanna be a little bit long cause I can shave a little bit off of that. Um, but I don't wanna be too short. And then I have to like move the transformer over and now I'm like encroaching into the space where the panels are next to it. Um, so just, uh, I, I try to like measure them out leave a little bit of extra so I can trim it if I need to. Then the next thing I had to do was roll out all the conductors. And uh, what I did is I, I just put one conductor through and I figured out what the length of the conductors is that I'm gonna need in the transformer itself, as well as in the panel. And I, again, go a little bit extra. It's better to just be able to trim them than to be too short. And then once I have that one all the way through, I pull it back out and I just use that one piece of wire to measure with from now on. So I can very easily pull all the other conductors alongside it and cut them and then tape them. So my primary, I'm at 208 feeding it. We're not feeding a neutral into this. It's 208, so we have a neutral, but we're only gonna be feeding three phase and a ground into the transformer. From the secondary side of the transformer, we're gonna be deriving a new neutral. So we don't wanna run a neutral to the primary side. We just want a neutral on our secondary. So all I'm running is black, red, blue, and a green conductor. And I'm running number six, 
good for 60 amps. We'll get into the calculations here in a minute uh, to show you, you know, what the primary current, secondary current, overcurrent protection should be and all of that kind of stuff. But just so that you know, I'm running number six in with a number eight ground to the primary side of this transformer. And then the second thing I did was just measured out the, the uh, secondary side as well. I took that flexible metal conduit, did the same thing, just fed another conductor in it, sized that conductor, pulled it back out, and then I cut all of my other conductors. Now, I just have a bunch of number six, so I'm just using number six on the secondary. You don't have to, again, we'll get into the calculations here in a minute to show you really could just use number 12 conductors for 20 amp circuits, but I just have so much of this sitting here. I'm just gonna use all of this. Uh, absolutely okay to go way bigger on your conductors. It's just not okay to go smaller. Instead of black, red, blue, since we're gonna be on high voltage now, we have to change our tape. So with the higher voltage system, I'm using brown, yellow, and purple, green, and gray for my neutral. Now that I have both of these things measured out and cut, all I have to do is connect the flex. I'm putting straight connectors into the bottom of the panel because I already conveniently have a one inch KO right dead center in the bottom of both of these panels. And then I neatly try to roll nice 90s over so that they stay parallel the whole way. Uh, that way it just looks really clean. And then I use 90 degree uh, connectors going into the transformer rather than having like a big loop of this flex sticking out. I want everything to be really tight and uh, relaxed in there. Now, normally if I have larger conductors, I will take the back plate off of that 90 connector because it's just way easier to feed conductors in it. You'll see me here just shoving it in there because I have such small conductors, it's really easy to do. But if you have large conductors and it's really hard to fit, you can take the back plate of that 90 connector off and then just fold your conductors over and then put the plate back on, super simple that way. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is actually bolt this transformer down to the ground. So I typically don't do this at first, just in case I need a little bit of adjustment. Um, I like to have the ability to adjust, and then once I get my conductors in, and I know this is exactly where it needs to sit because the wires are already cut and run, then I go and bolt this down. So I put a couple of anchors in the ground. I'm using three inch sleeve anchors and using a masonry bit to just drill into the concrete. And then I'm uh, hammering in sleeve anchors and getting those snug and tight with the transformer pads in there. Um, this is gonna be so smooth and it's not gonna vibrate and add any noise to it. And it's gonna hold it in place really, really well. Now you might also notice that there are flanges on the back side of this transformer. I'm not securing this to a wall. Um, I actually like to leave a little bit of ventilation space around all sides of the transformer. So I've measured out about three inches uh, from the back of the transformer to the wall so that I could make sure that I had enough airflow space back there. There was no reason for me to mount this to the back of a wall as well. Now let's do some calculations for transformers. Um, our transformer specifically, we've got a 15 kVA transformer, which is just 15,000 VA. Um, primary side that we're feeding in is 208 volts. We are stepping up, so our secondary voltage is gonna be 480 volts. And we're three phase, so our calculation has to have the square root of three in it. Just remember, most single phase and three phase calculations are almost identical. You just have the square root of three when you're dealing with three phase. So our formula is gonna look like this. You'll recognize P equals I times E is just the power formula, right? If you have the power wheel and we do this, P, I, E, if we're solving for P, we hide it and it's just I times E. If we're solving for I, it's gonna be P over E, which is right here, I equals P over E, but we have the square root of three. So if you're trying to um, remember how to like derive these equations, um, just remember if you have P equals I times E times the square root of three, you're trying to isolate I by itself. So you would just divide these two, divide E times the square root of three, these cancel out, but you also have to do the same thing on the other side of the equal sign. That's math, that's an equation. You have to do equal things on both sides for math to work out like that. So you would just do E times the square root of three. The little ones and twos that I have, that's just my primary side. So to figure out my primary current, I have to fit, I know my primary voltage. To figure out my secondary current, I have to know my secondary voltage. So let's just figure out what these actually are. Um, so if we are trying to find our primary current, we're gonna have 15,000 VA over our uh, primary voltage, which is 208, times the square root of three, which is just 1.732. If you remember nothing else from this video, <laughs> just remember that the square root of three that you will need for the rest of your career is 1.732. If you remember that, you'll be all right. And you end up type this crazy square root of three thing into your calculator. 
So if you do this calculation, you should end up with 41.6 amps, which corresponds to the nameplate current. On our nameplate, it says 208, uh, the current is 41.6 amps. So they're giving you primary current. Now to figure out our secondary current, just do the same thing. We're doing I secondary equals 15,000. Only thing that we're changing is our voltage. Now we're stepped up to 480 volts on our secondary times 1.732. Uh, if you do that in the calculator, you should get roughly 18 amps. So 18 amps on our secondary side, which is 480 volts, our voltage went up and our current went down. So that's how you were going to figure that out. Now you can't just go like slap a 40 amp breaker, 45 amp breaker on that. The code actually says that we have to uh, size our breakers at 125% of that. So we don't have to necessarily have primary and secondary overcurrent protection. We get the choice in article 450.3, specifically table 450.3, there's an A and a B. We're gonna be in B, we're under a thousand uh, volts. So our application, we're only gonna do primary protection. We're not gonna add secondary protection on this transformer. We're just doing a breaker on the primary side. So to do that, anything that's more than a, a current of more than nine amps, we, can, we do a 125 uh, percent of whatever our nameplate current rating was. We said that it was 41.6 amps, right? So we would just multiply that by one uh, 1.25. It's the same thing as 125%. We should get roughly about 52 amps when we do that. So we need a 52 amp breaker. Uh-oh, they don't make 52 amp breakers. So what do we do? Do we have to go down a size or do we go up a size? So note one in this table over here, says that if the 125% rating that you figure out of the nameplate current doesn't correspond to a standard breaker that's manufactured, you're allowed to go up to the next breaker size. Um, so the next breaker size after a 50 amp breaker would be a 60 amp breaker. So we're gonna throw a 60 amp breaker ahead of this transformer. And remember when you're thinking about breakers, the breakers are usually there to protect conductors, but in the case of transformers, breakers are there to protect the transformer itself, not the conductors. When you get into like motor loads, transformers, things get a little bit weird because normally the load is, the, the conductors are what a breaker is protecting. But even like with motors, you have um, short circuit and ground fault protection and you have overload protection. And so one of them is to protect the conductors from overheating, the other one's to protect the conductors from any kind of short circuits or ground faults. Um, but with the transformers specifically, we're talking about protecting that piece of equipment not necessarily the conductors. And this is table 240.6. I believe it's 240.6A now. And that'll show you all the standard breaker sizes. Now that we've got the whole thing installed, um, I'm leaving all of my panel wiring to the last. Uh, it's just kind of a method that I get in. I always try to hook up the equipment and then mess with the stuff where it could possibly get energized. Obviously these panels don't have any feeders into them. They're just dead panels right now. We'll get the feeders added later, but just kind of my methodology, I like to hook up the equipment first, but I hook up the terminations on the primary side first. So coming from my 208 panel, I've got my black, red, blue, and green. So I'm gonna land my black, red, blue in phase order on X1, X2, and X3, black, red, blue. And I'm gonna put my ground all the way over on the ground bus. Next thing I do is take my high voltage conductors. I've got brown, yellow, purple, gray, and green. And I'm gonna land them on H1, H2, and H3. And then my HO is gonna be where the neutral lands. Now, HO is really, really important for you to bond all your neutrals and all of your grounds. Uh, we're gonna have a grounding electrode conductor that's coming from the slab. So another thing that you have to do is make sure that you are attached to building steel and I am in a metal building. So I added a grounding electrode conductor that comes into this. And then I've also got my incoming ground from the 208 panel. I've got my outgoing ground to the 480 panel. And then I've got my neutral that I'm deriving from HO. So all those things have to be bonded together. Um, the grounding in this transformer is a little tiny ground bus. It doesn't have enough spaces for me to have all these conductors in that one place. So I just added some ground lugs and bolted them into the bottom of the transformer. And I ran another jumper from all of those grounds all the way through my ground lugs and into my HO. So any ground faults that happen or any um, short circuits that happen all of that is going to come back to that one singular bonding point. Now, one other really important thing to note is the voltage and bonding requirements in code. So because I have my secondary side that's above 250 volts to ground, I've got 277 from you know hot to neutral or hot to ground, 
um, I have to make sure that I'm bonding it and grounding it correctly. So in 250.97, it talks about making sure that you're putting some kind of threaded bonding bushing that has a set screw that will hold it in place. Any of that flexible conduit, all of that is bonded as well and it can't come loose very easily. Um, especially in a vibrating environment because you have some kind of a threaded screw that's holding it in place. So for that, I'm using these bonding bushings on the inside of the transformer and I'm using it inside of the panel. Now I'm also going to add bonding bushings on the primary side as well, even though uh, we're not over 250 volts. I just like doing this. It's just one more added level of protection. So I've got bonding bushings from my primary panel to my uh, primary side of my transformer and then bonding bushings from the transformer to my secondary panel. So all across the board, both ways, I'm over covered. Now that the transformer's hooked up, all my conduits are good, grounding and bonding is perfect. I am gonna leave this open because I am gonna run feeders into the panels and energize this. So I just wanna be able to test it with it open rather than having to take everything back apart. So now I put a 60 amp breaker on my primary panel, on my 208 panel coming in. We're gonna be feeding 60 amps into it and then coming out of it, we're at 18 amps, but I got the number six anyways. The other reason I wanted to run number six is because the actual lugs on the panel are rated at a minimum of six. So these lugs, if you look really, really closely, the main lugs on this panel say that they will accept number six to 300 KC mill conductors. So I can't just run number 12s up in there. It, it's like a massive lug and you get this tiny little conductor and it's not rated for that. So that's the other reason I just chose to ran number six because I had all of it and the lugs require a minimum of number six for this panel. All right, so now that we got our feeders run, let's turn this bad boy on. All right, let's make sure. Always wanna test our voltage when we turn something on. We got 208, 208, 208, 120, 120, and 120. All right, we are good to go. This is the breaker that's protecting it. So we are feeding uh, 208 down. We don't have a neutral that we're feeding it. 208's going in. We are deriving a new neutral on our 480 side coming back up here and we should have 480. So let's turn it on. Listen to that thing, you can barely hear it at all. Super quiet. All right, so just to make sure, we got four or, uh, 208 on this side, we already tested that. And we've got 480 on this side. So when you do a test, you always wanna check between A phase and B phase. We got 474, that's 480. B and C, 476, and A and C, 473. Then we always go hot to neutral, hot to neutral, hot to neutral. And the last one, you wanna go down hot to ground, hot to ground, hot to ground. And finally, neutral to ground, should say zero. That's it. Now, if you guys are interested at all, Maddox is actually uh, incredibly fast at shipping transformers. So there's a link in the description below. If you're looking for a transformer, they have this super simple website. You just go in, type the parameters that you're looking for. They have almost every kind of transformer, every size, utility scale, pad mount transformers, little dry types like this, oil filled. I mean, they're a transformer company and they have fast lead times. So they're talking like within a week or two of getting the order placed to having your transformer show up. So check out the link in the description below. If you're looking for a transformer, thank you guys for watching. Love you crazy people. I'll see you in the next one.